G'day, welcome back to the channel and welcome to this edition of MGuy EV News for Wednesday the 22nd of May 2024. So just demonstrating that the UK doesn't have a clue what it's doing at the moment. It's apparently going to allow self-driving cars on UK roads. Brilliant, what could possibly go wrong? Self-driving cars on Britain's roads by 2026 as Automated Vehicle Act becomes law. ACT will deliver legal framework for the safe deployment of self-driving cars. Yeah, good luck with that. Department for Transport believes we could see autonomous vehicles by 2026. Experts say it still needs to resolve accident liability and cybersecurity risks. Yeah, gee, you don't say. Self-driving vehicles have taken a step closer and could be on our roads as early as 2026 after the Automated Vehicle AV Act received royal assent on Monday and now becomes law. The legislation delivers the most comprehensive legal framework of its kind worldwide for the safe deployment of self-driving vehicles in Britain, according to the Department for Transport, DFT. Transport Secretary Mark Harper said the technology will be a real boost to both safety and our economy. The best legal framework for self-driving cars is an outright ban on them. Oh dear, apparently Mother Nature doesn't like wind turbines very much because she's sending tornadoes to snap them like toothpicks. Multiple windmills taken down, you can see down there and across the road there. Wind turbines are a terrible idea. Not only do they last only about 20 years, but the blades cannot be recycled. They have to be buried. That's all you can do with them, just bury them. How environmentally friendly is that? Jeez. And this is the kind of product that you're now gonna to have to have at a vehicle repair shop. If you're storing EVs, you know, you can't have them next to each other. So you have to build structures like this in order to keep them apart so that if one of them decides to burst into flames, it doesn't set all the others off as well. Building safe areas for damaged electric vehicle EV storage. The sales of battery electric vehicles, BEVs, plug-in hybrids, PHEVs, hybrid electric vehicles, HEVs, have increased year on year since their introduction to the UK. Well, that might be coming to an end with luck. However, so has the need for being able to safely repair or store a damaged vehicle. With this in mind, the government has issued guidance to all stakeholders involved, including car repair centres, car dealerships, scrapyards, recycling plants and car auctions, which outlines best practice on high voltage systems used within electric vehicles that can pose different hazards to those working on these vehicles. Damaged electric vehicle EV storage. Electric vehicles that sustain minor accidents are being kept 15 metres apart in repair garages over fears they may explode, meaning just two damaged electric cars are taking the same space as 100 petrol or diesel cars under current DVLA and Transport Department guidelines. The Department of Transport has found that fires can reignite within hours or even days following an accident. It therefore advises technicians to isolate the HV system by disconnecting the low voltage system and removing the HV system manual service disconnect. EVs with a suspected damaged HV system should be stored in an outside quarantine area where the vehicle will be monitored for up to 48 hours after an... I mean, seriously? Really, this is progress? And then you've got to build quarantine bays. Building an outdoor EV quarantine area using interlocking concrete blocks couldn't be simpler. Well, it could be simpler. You wouldn't have to do it at all. That would be much simpler. Another week, another Tesla price cut. Can you imagine what this is doing to used values of Teslas? I mean, nobody wants to buy used EVs anyway. And Tesla keeps cutting the prices of new ones. It is insane. Tesla slashes prices in Australia for third time in two months, up to $5,000 off Model Y, Model 3. The top selling Tesla Model Y is now cheaper than a Toyota RAV4 hybrid in Australia after the third price cut in two months. See, these are disposable items. This is now a disposable car. You know, you buy it, you use it for a few years, and then you just dump it because it's not worth square root of bugger all when you come to trade it in. The price of the most affordable Tesla Model Y is now close to $10,000 cheaper than it was two months ago. Two months? 
$10,000 in two months after another round of significant price cuts were introduced by the US electric car giant in Australia. After handing down two rounds of price cuts last month with reductions of up to $8,500, Tesla has taken three to $5,000 off its most popular Model 3 and Model Y variants effective today. No one will want to buy a second-hand Tesla. Why would you bother? Why would you even buy a new one? Because you could wait a week and it would be $5,000 cheaper. Ah, yes, of course, battery energy storage systems. These are the answer to everything, aren't they? We're not going to need gas-fired uh, electricity generation because we can just build big batteries and store masses of electricity like that, can't we? Yeah, that's, that's right. Fire burns for five days at huge lithium-ion energy storage facility. Lithium-ion battery fires are rare but extremely hard to put out. Yeah, you can say that. And have blackened image of key clean energy technology. A fire at a California lithium-ion battery energy storage facility, once described as the world's largest, has burned for five days, prompting evacuation orders. The fire broke out on Wednesday at the 250-megawatt Gateway Energy Storage Facility owned by grid infrastructure developer LS Power in San Diego. A fire crew managed to get the blaze at the 16,000 square foot facility under control after around 24 hours, lifting evacuation orders that were made. But the fire has twice reignited and has now caused major damage to the building, including burning through part of the roof, prompting evacuation orders to be reinstated. The California Fire Department said that harmful gases were making access an issue for firefighters. In a Sunday evening update, the fire department said conditions have improved greatly, though light, wispy smoke is still visible. Well, that those harmful gases, they are just not they're not just harmful, they are terrible. Not just for breathing in, but also for the environment. No way is this kind of stuff environmentally friendly or clean or anything like that. Nasty, nasty chemicals, nasty, toxic gases. And they, once they catch fire, you can't put the buggers out. Great. And just as I'm putting this video together, this story came in. Electric cars twice as lethal for pedestrians as petrol or diesel. Study finds the vehicle's quieter engines are a significant factor in higher fatality rates. Just another reason why you should never, ever buy an EV. Electric cars kill pedestrians at double the rate of petrol or diesel vehicles, a study in a BMJ journal has found. That's the British Medical Journal, by the way. Experts said that electric or hybrid cars were twice as likely to be involved in a road accident with a bystander than a petrol or diesel car over the same distance. The researchers suggested the vehicle's quieter engines, electric motors, were a significant factor in higher fatality rates and called on the government to mitigate the risks as it phases out petrol and diesel cars in pursuit of net zero. The study looked at the number of casualties from road collisions in Britain between 2013 and 2017 using road safety data and calculated the number of pedestrians that had been hit by different types of cars. Over the period, 96,285 pedestrians were hit by a car or taxi, while three quarters of these people had been hit by a car with a combustion engine. This was because they covered significantly more miles. To overcome this, the researchers calculated the rate of casualties per 100 million miles covered by electric and hybrid cars compared with petrol and diesel cars. They found that 5.16 people on average were hit by an electric or hybrid car for every 100 million miles that type of vehicle had driven compared with 2.4 people for petrol and diesel. So basically you double the chance of getting hit by an EV as a regular car. So that's just about it for this one. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one. Bye for now.